before us, we have social services, Director Pratt. Director Pratt, I'll let you do the introductions and then you can just walk us through your budget. The floor is yours. Okay, thank you so much. To my left, I have the Metro Social Services Director of the Homeless Impact Division. And to my right is our Chief Financial Officer. And thank you so much. The mission of Metro Social Services is to empower Davidson County residents to achieve economic stability and social well-being. We accomplish this by providing a wide range of services to help those in need. These services promote positive change for individuals and families in times of crisis and economic hardship. The Federal Reserve reports that four out of 10 people do not have access to $400 if an emergency occurs. These are the people that we see every day. Many of these hardships are a result of structural poverty. Structural poverty is characterized by the lack of access to income and basic assets, which results in the persistent inability to make ends meet. Structural poverty replicates itself in predictable structural ways relating to demographics and social and economic systems. Metro Social Services published data in the Community Needs Evaluation that was released in March of this year specifically related to this issue. As customer needs continue to grow, financial struggles are not the only challenges our customers face. There are a host of other destabilizing factors, including but not limited to domestic violence, severe mental health, evictions, homelessness, and food insecurity that require intense work. In spite of this, we were able to manage more cases without an increase in the number of our social work staff. This fiscal year to date, Metro Social Services provided vital support services for 1,523 walk-ins and referred customers to critical social or economic needs. Social work staff provided numerous hours of case management to stabilize persons and families in crisis, resulting from an inability to make ends meet economically, food and housing challenges, and other issues. These continued increases in service delivery are not sustainable with the number of staff providing the assistance. Metro Social Services serves as the pivotal engagement point for referral and assistance for Davidson County residents across the spectrum of human need within the wider service ecosystem. So at this time, I will turn it over to Judy Tackett, who will talk about the Homeless Management Information System. Good afternoon. So uh, the Homeless Impact Division of Metro Social Services, I want to go where we are today and then kind of where we came from. So um, we, uh, for one, we unified our governance structure from two to one board. That was last July when uh, you voted to eliminate the Metropolitan Homelessness Commission and replace it with the Nashville Davidson County Continuum of Care Homelessness Planning Council. Uh, so that was one of the big structural changes that we saw really unifying the governance structure around homelessness in our community. Two, um, the Homelessness Planning Council is currently working on a three-year strategic plan that focuses on prioritizing to build a foundation up, uh, on previous work. It will be action-oriented and it will build on uh, it will build in progress measures to really see um, as at the system level are we actually moving forward and also can we make quick corrections to what's happening in that systems building. As part of that, uh, the um, Homeless Impact Division became the Homeless Management Information System lead for our community. Um, I'm going to refer to that the H as HMAS. It's a database that is critical to um, give us a better picture of what systems work look, looks like. Um, the goals are to gather better data uh, to help us understand how people experiencing homelessness go through our system in our city and then better uh, and improve how we quicker can serve people in a coordinated way. Um, all of this has already resulted in some uh, specific outcomes. For one, this summer, um, the uh, federal government, through the Housing and Urban Development, has awarded Nashville with a $3.5 million grant, which we uh, administer to address youth and young adult homelessness. It's over, uh, that 3.5 million are over 
two years and have the potential to um, get into recurring funds after that um, for 1.5 million, I would guess, a year to our community. Uh, second, we also received more federal dollars, also through the Department of Housing and Urban Development. We saw after um, stagnating federal dollars, uh, a close to 10% increase uh, this past year, um, and uh, for a total of 3.5 million for this uh, current year, also to the community. Uh, we saw a decrease in our one night shelter and outdoor count uh, this year. Uh, that decrease was 14%. Uh, uh, that's uh, 312 people, fewer people were counted. So um, just to give you a picture, the total before was always around 2,300. To be exact, it was 2,298 last year. This year, it's um, 1,986. I have to make uh, sure that everybody understands that's a one-night count of the narrowest definition of homelessness. It doesn't give us the full picture, which again comes into a systems building and homeless management information system. Once it's functional, would we'll be providing us with a bigger uh, picture of what homelessness looks like, where people are coming from, where are they going, why are these one night numbers decreasing, just would give us more answers. Um, we also think we did see right now a decrease uh, through improved coordination across the system. Really, uh, that has been started through in 2013 through a House Nashville campaign. You have probably heard that, and, and, and it is building a coordinated entry system. Um, and, and is really last year has come to a point where really the community is stepping up and coming together around looking to uh, data and outcome measures because we've really focused on that and talked a lot, uh, uh, a lot about that. I also would like to highlight um, the improved collaboration with other metro departments, um, police, um, OEM, uh, parks, coats, uh, we go transit, uh, et cetera, et cetera. We've really seen an increase and in, in, in improvement in how we work together as, as Metro around homelessness. Um, as part of that whole community improvement, one example, we had a campaign that was called 9090. We focused on veteran homelessness. We used uh, the homeless management information system to really improve and, and encourage all the veteran partners to enter data in that system. And right now, as of yesterday, I, I mean, we have now, it resulted to really have a by name list. So that means we know by name the veterans that uh, are identified in our community. And we have a way to quickly identify uh, veterans and link them to services. As of yesterday, 262 veterans have been identified in the system. Um, and so I also wanted to, to close with, uh, we are planning um, for the community a um, Pathways to Housing Symposium on June 20th, a half day event. Uh, just watch out for an invitation. We're working on that right now to give you an invitation to really get more information out and do those regularly through the continuum of care to just uh, um, be more inclusive and, and informative around the work that's happening around homelessness. And finally, if I may, I'd like to take this opportunity to say thank you to all of the Metro Social Services staff, the staff of the Homeless Impact Division, who do an excellent job every day to serve our customers and our homeless of Davidson County. Thank you. Thank you, Director Pratt. Councilman Pulley. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, Ms. Pratt, and uh, for all of your staff and all the great work that you do. Th certainly thoroughly enjoyed uh, the time we spend together on the hospital, uh, Health Hospitals and Social Services Committee and the many updates that you provide us there. Um, just a couple of brief questions, and forgive me if I uh, came in late and missed part of this presentation, and the answers are contained within that, but uh, uh, in looking at your uh, uh, numbers here, it looks like you uh, lost a little federal and uh, other program revenue from 2019 to the tune of about, uh, looks like $244,000, uh, um, and you offset uh, those uh, with expenses in the special purpose fund specifically. So I wonder if you could just tell us how you lost that money. Sure. I'm going to allow our CFO to respond to that question. Yeah, we have uh, 234800 from the CABI program. Uh, which is the, um, what they call is the um, 
cooperative agreement to benefit homeless individuals, and um, that grant was ended last year, and we did not get the renewal from the CABI program. And then we have the uh, HMIS, that $53,000 that we are applying now this year because it's a yearly grant. So, and the uh, youth program we have, we did $10,000 in there that we still have to apply again every year. So that's why you see the in decrease in the amount of money. But um, if we are applying those grants again and get the reward awarded, we're going to make the transfer back to the fund to go on with the next year. Okay. Thank you very much. Yes. Uh, if we could just keep those people from uh, uh, reducing our grant money, that would be great, wouldn't <laughs> yeah. it? Um, and I look at your actual expenses from uh, 2018 as compared to what you budgeted. And overall, even though they were slightly increased in uh, special purpose fund, overall you ended up giving back money. So uh, we very much appreciate your diligence in that category. And I thank you very much. And thank you, Madam Chair, for the time. Thank, thank you, you, Councilman Pullett. Councilwoman Gilmore. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ms. Pratt. And Thank each one of you. I really appreciate you. I did have a question, and I wanted to thank you also for just you were able to expand the Meals on Wheels through your yes. program. That is very, I don't think people realize how important that is once you're a little bit older and you don't have the ability yes. to cook like you did. <laughs> yes. So I do, I do want to publicly thank you for that. Thank you. And I did have a question, though, um, for Judith, as it relates to that um, information system. Could you just speak? You said it wasn't quite fully operational. Could you just uh, give us a little bit of information on what the status of it is and where we're moving with it? So um, we actually are working with a consultant right now, and we're getting additional um, uh, technical assistance support that we are setting up with the Department of Housing and Urban Development to do a fuller evaluation of what we what it is, what shape it's in. Um, it is uh, we know it's underfunded and understaffed, so the capacity there is it's um, and also not quite open yet, where everybody shares fully the data. Like when I say everybody is, we need more uh, support uh, service providers entering into it and participating, and also sh have some visibility on on sharing uh, some data in a safe, secure way. So is the, um, you said the urban housing development, are they giving you, they're providing funding for that right now? Uh, yes, the continuum of care um, uh, is the Department of Housing, housing and Urban Development. Um, they are uh, providing a grant, that's the $53,000 grant that we got with that. Okay. And then um, we also this year, as part of the increase in grant funding, uh, we're going to get uh, an additional $88,000. So through this transition process, um, we, we're, we're transitioning those dollars, grants right now. They're not visible yet. Thank you. And so how much will it take to make it fully operational? What's the dollar amount? Um, what uh, it's for, for really just looking at the data staffing, um, I'm looking at three staff members for the database, to run the database and the training and the ensuring data quality entry and all of that. For coordinated entry, which we are using HMAS, it's another three staff members, just to get more uh, additional data in. For example, um, we have built a close relationship with the rescue mission. Without having the data from the rescue mission in this system, we're not going to be able ever to deduplicate um, uh, the numbers. Uh, knowing what, what homelessness looks like. And so with that, they are partnering with us to get that done. Um, awesome. They're waiting for us because right now it's, it's a staff capacity issue. A good deal. And then so I had an, a question about, y you said that you're having difficulty with people because we know that the, the information can only be as good as the data that goes in it. Yes, yes. So how can we help? And I guess what, why are people not entering their information? Is there, what is the barrier that they wouldn't want to share information that would improve homelessness? Um, one of the things is uh, every organization has their own database. So we're asking for double entry. Okay. And so it's really to um, get people to agree to do double entry, you also need to get something out of it. And so one of the things we've done and we have applied in this actually um, today is the deadline for a, a grant um, to help 
get us HUD funding for education, for training, like the data quality improvement, making sure that the, our staff is trained, that we have a train the trainer program so that we have ongoing training for data quality. So if we build a system, it needs to be you know, good data that's in there. Um, uh, it looks like there is a potential that we can get up to $150,000 over the next two years for uh, help from also the federal government to come in with that those training dollars and get get us that um, expand some of the vendor programs uh, help with getting um, rescue mission and the shelter vets uh, fully in there uh, set up a functional system so that's an um, two-year plan that we are working on trying to get funded very good and then maybe if you can just ex it's double entry that they have to enter it in their database and they have to share it with your database yes. okay thank you so much I appreciate all your hard work thank you Thank you, Councilwoman Gilmore. Councilman Swope. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, thank you, Ms. Pratt and company for being here today. Um, you guys do great work. Uh, but coming back to what uh, Council Lady Gilmore was just asking you about, are you aware of the Better Health Initiative that um, Dr. James Hildreth at Mahara University and Vanderbilt and HCA just came out with about six weeks ago? Uh, I'm, I'm not, not in detail, so, but, but with the health, um, so we're working with health department, we're working with, um, with, we're working with all the partners to really look beyond the homelessness system and mm -hmm. linking with the systems. So we're looking at that and looking at how we can make that part of it. We are, uh, have really started also a um, committee that helps us uh, bring the right people together. So if, if I may, get a contact from you. Absolutely. Well it it, it literally, I think it's going, they're going down the same path in, in not only identifying the homeless and the underserved population of, of Nashville, but going one step beyond that is being able to share database information between a Vanderbilt, an HCA, a thousand NGOs, Columbia TriStar, um, people that traditionally have never shared information before, but in the sharing of information through one collective database and whether that is a system that automatically takes that and eliminates the pick and shovel need of double entries, which is literally the hardest part of all this, but rather culls that data on an automatic basis. What it enables is it enables fire, EMT and police to very succinctly determine what best resource to use, whether that is Metro General Hospital for a cold or Vanderbilt for liver transplant. Um, and this is an ongoing conversation with this group right now. We are entertaining third party bids uh, at the moment to create this system. So before you guys go too far down the path that you're heading, let me hook you up and let's all work together because I think th there's shared dollars, there's shared resources, and much more importantly, there's shared people there's a whole collection of both private and public entities in this city right now that are already working to solve this problem that I think would greatly help you guys. And on that front also, we're, we're working with United Ways and United Way and looking at what they're doing in that arena as well. Yeah, so they're yes. involved in yes. this as well. Yes. I'm surprised you guys aren't, so let me, let me correct that. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, Councilman Swope. Any other council members seeking recognition? Councilman Hastings, where are you? You raised your hand? Okay. I was going to tell you, press your button. Oh, okay. Seeing, seeing none, thank you, Director Pratt, and your team for everything that you do for this city. This concludes your budget hearing. Thank you. Thank you.